Howdy friendos, my name is Stuart and welcome to a video I know a lot of you are curious about how the hell we're going to tackle this. It's still a very long, ongoing cartoon series that started in the 90s. And since we started doing these two days a week, I know for a fact a lot of you are like, okay, but what is happening? I'm just going to tell you right ahead. We are doing the South Park movie. Bigger, longer, and uncut. Just because I don't have infinite time and all that sort of stuff. But let's go ahead and get started. For those who have somehow avoided this pop culture juggernaut, South Park is an animated series created by Trey Parker and Matt Stone about the misadventures of a small town in Colorado. Originally made with construction paper cutoffs during their days at the University of Colorado, this series evolved from Jesus fighting Santa about the true meaning of Christmas into a 25 plus seasons, plus several movies, plus many video games about our four boys, Stan, Kyle, Cartman, and Kenny. Now, I know a lot of you are eager to go into in-depth about this with each individual character, but as I mentioned earlier, we're just going to do the movie for now, and if this video does well, let's say 20,000 views, 2,000 likes, 200 comments, we'll look into covering other characters, and we'll have to do it one character at a time, because it's just very long. I can't guarantee what date or what method we'll do it in, but we'll do our best. I can promise it. I, I actually really love South Park and I really want to do it. So we'll do the four boys as individual videos, but we can also do Butters, Craig, Tweak, and some of the others as we go into this, or, or the girls and adults, whatever. There's a lot of options for a lot of episodes, but I need, this is kind of the test video to see if you guys are actually interested. So if you want us to determine the absolute craziness that these boys and the other characters get into, I need you to obliterate the like and subscribe button, do all the things, share the bell, send the bell straight to hell, actually. Send it right down there with Kenny. Uh, <laughs> So today, we are going to look at the four boys from the South Park movie, Bigger, Longer, and Uncut. And they are all currently in third grade, and they recently watched a movie that taught them some colorful language, and the parents and the world in turn react to it. First boy we're going to start with is Stan Marsh. He's typically the ringleader of the group and is loosely based on and voiced by Trey Parker. He's the most average of his group of friends with a hint of cynicism, but sweetness in him. He means to do the right thing, but is confused by the world around him. This is not helped by his massive crush on Wendy Testaberger. As such, it is safe to start Stan at true neutral. Kyle Broflowski, similar to Stan, is voiced and based loosely on Matt Stone. Kyle is typically the smartest of the group, but also has a tendency to let his emotions dictate some of those decisions. Kyle lives in fear of angering his mother, but still hangs all around his friends without much issue. Except for Cartman, because he will constantly remind you, You're a stupid Jew! You're a Jew! Such a goddamn Jew, Matt! Good job, Jew! Jew! Job, Jew! A Jew. Can I get away with saying that? I don't think I'm on brand enough. You know what? <laughs> Kyle's true neutral. I I can't get away with saying that. <laughs> on to Kenny McCormick, the death-prone child that was part of the catchphrase that the show never quite escaped from. Oh my god, you killed Kenny, you bastard! Kenny comes from a poor and abusive family. Kenny himself isn't perfect, uh, and he knows a lot of things that he probably shouldn't, mostly about sex, bodily affections, and other stuff that, like, is just kind of child inappropriate. But he's ready to do anything for a quick buck, and deep down he does care about his friends. As such, we'll label Kenny a chaotic neutral, leaning chaotic good. And finally, the one you're all waiting for, Eric Theodore Cartman the poster boy and scapegoat for nearly every controversial moment on South Park. Cartman was labeled as a little Archie Bunker, foul-mouthed, lazy, raging bastard of the group. And let's be real, you all knew at least one person like this. Maybe even you were Cartman growing up. And while we don't see the full scope of his evil in this movie, Cartman is downright sociopathic, creating dozens of harebrained schemes to earn money or revenge. This guy will spend thousands of dollars and ruin countless lives to either get free ice cream or trick his friend Kyle, because he's a Jew. Cartman, even in the early days of South Park when this show was released, is without a doubt chaotic evil. And with that out of the way, let's go. However, before we go, did you know that you can watch the next three alignment videos ahead of schedule by becoming a channel member, a patron, or a Twitch subscriber? Whichever one is most convenient for you, you could just go ahead and do that. Becoming any of these premium members gives you access to the next three alignment videos on your select platform and gives you a spot at the end credits of our alignment videos and gaming videos. Each membership also gives you access to another unique set of benefits. YouTube Premium gives you access to stickers and emojis not available anywhere else, and sometimes a fourth bonus alignment video. Patreon gives you access to monthly wallpapers, lore packets, and access to the uncut archive of our D&D campaigns. 
and Twitch gives you access to a different set of emote stickers and access to our entire streaming library. If you're especially ambitious and want to collect all three Infinity Stones of the Loading Crew, this gives you access to a special title in our Discord. It's mostly bragging rights, but hey, you're better than everyone else. Check any of the links in the description to gain access and help support the channel. With a full Sunday ahead of him, and the Terrace and Philip movie out, Stan goes to collect his friends. Stan asks his mom for money politely. Kenny decides to skip church, which I'm sure won't cause any problems. Kyle kicks Ike twice, and then lies to his mom about where he's going, having to drag Ike along to keep cover. Cartman, who was just eating and watching TV, joins in too. Lawful good for Stan, chaotic neutral for Kenny and Cartman, and bizarrely chaotic evil for Kyle. What do you mean, no? have to be accompanied by a parent or guardian. When the boys arrive and learn that they can't see an R-rated movie, most everyone is ready to pack it up. However, it's Stan who decides to pay a homeless man to act as their guardian so they can get in. Technically lawful evil. I know. I think my parents were on to something when they said this show corrupted us. I literally sang this song on my bus with my best friend as loud as possible while we were in middle school. That 20 song, by the way. <laughs> After being exposed and learning some very colorful language through a Nat 20 song, the boys take it to heart, not giving a rat's ass about the, the ticket seller's discovery of the truth. The boys lord over the other kids of their new linguistic skills. Chaotic neutral. Also, extra ding for Stan for trying to talk to Wendy and uh, it not going well. He also meets Gregory and tries to one-up him with seeing the movie, something he's uninterested in. True neutral. The next day at school, the boys accidentally reveal their new vocabulary skills in front of their teacher. This does start an argument, which I'll give the boys a chaotic neutral, but Cartman is getting some extra dings because... How would you like to suck my balls, Mr. Now in trouble, the boys try and fail to hide where they learn how to swear. Cartman in particular folds like a card table and blames Terrence and Philip for warping his mind, unintentionally causing the plot of the movie. Neutral evil for Cartman, chaotic neutral for the boys. By the way, neutral evil for Cartman because he created the scapegoat with Terrace and Philip. You should have seen Kyle when his mom showed up. He was scared out of his mind. <laughs> Shut up, Cartman. No, dude, I'd be scared too. Your mom's a fucking bitch. Waiting in line, Stan tries to get advice on how to talk to Wendy. Too bad Chef gives some advice and it's pretty unsuitable for a third grader. Oh, that's easy. You just gotta find the clitoris. I said this shit is unsuitable for third graders. TikTok. Yeah, I'm going there. I don't fucking care. Forced into a rehabilitation program and another fun song, the boys learn that maybe they don't have to swear and they could use their other words. Too bad they all immediately go back and watch the Terrace and Phillip movie. Chaotic neutral? I'll bet you $100 you can't light a fart on fire. <laughs> After seeing the movie, Cartman and Kenny getting into an argument about setting a fart on fire, Kenny, upon finding out that he'll get 100 bucks, goes for it and sets himself on fire. Cartman is actually relieved since he didn't have to pay the money in the first place. Chaotic neutral for Kenny, Neutral evil for Cartman. No! <laughs> Dying, Kenny goes straight to hell. I mean, look at his alignment. He is tortured by Satan and his master, Saddam Hussein. <laughs> Oh god, this was a product of its time, wasn't it? That's amazing. Upon learning that Satan plans to escape hell through a long-destined prophecy, Kenny will do everything in his power to warn his friends. Getting them to believe is a different matter. Lawful good for Kenny. Grounded for seeing the movie, but not Kenny's death, the boys watch TV despite being grounded. They witness the Moms Against Canada jumpstart the Canadian-American War with the capture of Terrace and Philip. Let's just label this as a small chaotic neutral, so a half ding for the boys. I'm getting pretty sick of him calling my mom. Well, cause mom's a bitch, she's a big fat bitch, she's the biggest bitch in the whole wide world. He's Frustrated that his friend's mom caused a war and Kyle won't stand up to her, Cartman decides to vent in a glorious Nat 20 song. By the way, most of the songs in this movie are Nat 20 songs. Too bad he's caught and is given a chip that forces him under pain to stop swearing. Chaotic neutral. So you can't say, I'm Eric Cartman, the fattest fucking piece of shit in the world? Fuck you! <laughs> kind of feel bad doing this to Kyle, but he's actively trying to get vengeance on Cartman's pain. So chaotic evil. I know. You started a war. You have to stop it. To make them safe again. 
again. Hello? Our children are precious. Hello? With the war consuming everything around them, Stan tries to talk with his parents. Ignored, once again, the boys decide to save Terrace and Philip. We'll give Stan a lawful good for trying to actually talk with his mom, and then chaotic goods for all of them as they all want to end the war to get their moms back. Impress Wendy and swear again. Found 8 million pages with the word clitoris. Wow! You must be 18 to enter this website. Okay. After doing a quick internet search to figure out more about the clitoris, the boys rally the local kids to stop their parents. Of course, they don't really have a solid plan, and Cartman gets refreshments after Kenny scared him. After Gregory comes up with an actual plan, Stan volunteers to be the main agent. Lawful good for Stan, neutral good for everyone else. <laughs> oh. Spotting a dejected, heartbroken Satan, Kenny gives the guy some advice to believe in himself and not get walked over. Dude's not even phased by giving a relationship advice to the Lord of all evil. Too bad Saddam seduces Satan with another earworm. <laughs> God, this movie's soundtrack. <laughs> Lawful good for Kenny. After Kyle hides Ike in the attic for his own protection, the boys meet up with the mole. Despite the consequences of being grounded for two, or God forbid, three weeks, the boys commit. Kyle and Stan serve as a distraction with Big Gay Al, while Cartman is asked to turn off the power. Too bad Cartman is scared away by Kenny, warning him that the end is near. The three boys get a single neutral good ding, with Kenny getting another lawful good, Stan and Kyle getting one more neutral good, and Cartman getting a chaotic neutral. You can't kill Terrence and Philip. If they die, Satan and Saddam Hussein are going to come take over the world. <laughs> with the plan down the crapper, Stan and Cartman publicly stand up against their moms. Even with the war now in full swing, Cartman even jumps in and saves Terrence and Philip, messing with his V-chip. Lawful good for Stan and Cartman, but neutral for Kyle, as he's too scared to stand up. Terrence and Philip, wait! We have to get you to the rendezvous point! After nearly getting knocked out, Stan finally finds the clitoris. God. Reaffirmed to believe in himself, Stan confronts the adults with the other South Park kids. Cartman and even Kyle stand up with them, with Kyle calling out his mom about everything. Lawful good for all the boys, minus Kenny. With the prophecy fulfilled, thanks Sheila, Satan, Saddam, and Kenny all escape hell, with Saddam ready to rule the world. Too bad Saddam didn't realize Cartman has gained new mastery over his damaged V-chip, with some hilarious swearing. Chaotic good for Cartman. Yeah, I had to do that. And I'm gonna give him a nat 20 scene because this is just really funny. With the day saved, Satan gives Kenny one final witch with his cosmic powers. Kenny, with the infinity at his fingertips, instead asks for the world return the way it was before the war began, even if it means he will still die. With one last goodbye and a moral lesson learned from the boys, South Park returns to normal and Kenny ascends to his new temporary home on heaven. At least for a little bit. Stan, I never really cared for Gregory. You didn't? No, dude, fuck Gregory. Fuck him right in the ear. Yay. Thank you, Clitoris. South Park... Honestly, it's a blast to watch, but like, you know, what, what do you got to do about the alignment of these kids? I mean, I grew up with the show. I watched it in the 90s, even when I was supposed to. And my parents forbade me from seeing it until they realized that it's just trashy humor and there's really nothing wrong with it. And now growing up, it's just fun to see where South Park has gone. And it's, it's the latest seasons are kind of fascinating. Yes, the production has changed and the stories are less about one-offs and they're more about story arcs now, interestingly enough. But it's interesting to see like one of the earliest points of the show and to see where it comes now. If this video does well, I will look at the later seasons and do it from there. Honestly, I think it might just be best if I'm now that I'm thinking about I'm actually thinking about it on the fly right now as I'm recording it. I might just do later seasons when they actually started doing story arcs rather than like doing a whole history of one shots followed by the actual plot. I, I don't know. What do you guys like? Give me a, give me ideas in the comments. I'm, I'm actually fishing for ideas here. Anyway, thank you to the patrons and I'll see you all next time.